Okay, I now am going to continue with reduction, um, again in trig, and today it's going to be not with specific numerical angles, but in general. So we're going to reduce um, angles bigger than 180. A few things that are crucial to remember. The first thing to remember is that theta is always an acute angle between 0 and 90 degrees. We could sometimes work with theta, sometimes it's beta, sometimes it's A, B, sometimes it's delta, whatever the variant, sorry, variable is. And then secondly, you always work with it back to the x-axis, back to the 0, 180 degree line. So, let's look at the first one here, which is theta. Now, theta is going to be an angle. Remember, they always start going anti-clockwise. So, theta would be an acute angle in quadrant one. Okay. If we have an angle which is 180 degrees minus theta, remember theta is an acute angle. So let's say it's 20 degrees. So 180 minus 20 degrees is 160 degrees. So irrespective of the size of theta, because it's always acute, 180 minus theta is always in the second quadrant. In other words, it makes sense. So 180 degrees minus theta is in that quadrant. Because all the way to there is going to be 180, but we're subtracting the acute angle of theta. So this angle there is always going to be in the second quadrant, 180 minus theta. Third one is 180 degrees plus theta. So now let's have a look at that. 180 plus theta always, because theta is acute, has to lie in the third quadrant. Because if theta is, say, 70 degrees. 180 plus 70 is 250, and 250 is between 180 and 270. So whenever we have 180 degrees plus theta, it's going to lie in quadrant 3. And also, once again, it makes logical sense, because 180 takes us to there, and then we're adding on theta, which is our acute angle. Fourth quadrant, 360 degrees minus theta. Once again, irrespective of the size of theta, any angle between 0 to 90, 360 minus theta will always take us to the fourth quadrant. Because let's think about it. 360 is all the way around, but from 360 I'm subtracting an acute angle. So 360 minus theta takes us into the fourth quadrant, quadrant 4. And theta, once again, is going to be my little acute angle. Okay, so now... What we do is, we're going to always work with angles in terms of 180 plus 180 minus 360 minus or just the theta. And we want to reduce it to the acute angle, which is theta. So I'm going to randomly just choose a few. Let's have a look at sine of 360 minus theta. Let's have a look at cos of 180 degrees plus theta. Let's have a look at tan of... 180 degrees minus theta. Now, each of these angles on the left are bigger than 90 degrees. They're not acute, and we want to reduce them to acute. So, same as we did yesterday, there are two questions we ask. Firstly, what quadrant is this angle in? And secondly, is it positive or negative? And reduce it to the acute angle. So, if we do the first one, sine of 360 minus theta, what quadrant are we looking at? 360 minus theta is always in the fourth quadrant, so this angle is going to be in the fourth quadrant, and sine is negative from our cast diagram, so this reduces to negative sine theta. Sorry, we're getting a bit complicated, a bit messy. Minus sine theta. So sine of this angle reduces to an acute angle, but it changes from positive to negative. So look at the next one. 180 degrees plus theta, what quadrant is that? Definitely in the third, 180 plus theta takes us to the third quadrant. Cos is negative, so it becomes negative cos theta, because the acute angle is theta. Tan, 180 minus theta. Which quadrant are we in? Here. 180 minus theta is in the second quadrant. So this is in the second quadrant. Tan in the second quadrant is negative, because tan is positive first and third quadrant, it's negative in the second. So this becomes negative 
tan of theta. Okay, so remember it's not only theta, it could be any other angle, but it's always acute and we want to reduce it every time using the reduction formula from the big angle to the acute angle. Check in if it's positive or negative, depending on which quadrant we end up in. Hope that's helpful. Now I'm going to do a few more um, where we include negative angles and angles bigger than 360 degrees. Okay, now we're going to do some specific but still simple examples on reducing these examples down to acute angles. So if we look at the first one, we have cos of 360 plus A. And the first question we always ask ourselves is, what quadrant is this angle going to be in? So now if we look at 360 plus A, without a doubt, it's going to take us, 360 will take us a complete revolution plus A. Remembering that A is acute is going to be in the first quadrant. And from our cast diagram, K, A, S, cos is positive in the first quadrant so that whole angle just becomes cos of a number two cos of negative a remember negative angle goes clockwise so a which is acute is going to end up in the fourth quadrant and cos is positive in the fourth quadrant so that is also going to be cos a moving on to number three let's use a different color so with number three we've got sine of 720 plus A. So now if we visualize which quadrant that is going to lie in, remember this question we always ask, what quadrant is it going to lie in? 720 is gonna go, oh, that's bigger than 360. So we go down, round to 360, round to another plus another 360 gives me 720 plus A. So that's gonna take me into the first quadrant. So that angle 720 plus A is in the first quadrant and sine is positive in the first quadrant. So that just reduces to sine A. Number four. If we look at number four now, the big angle we work in with is angle A, which is acute plus 1080. Now where is that going to take us? Okay, so let's see. 360, zoom, all the way around. 720, zoom, all the way around. Plus another 360 takes us to 1080 plus A. So A plus 1080 takes us all the way to the first quadrant. And tan is positive in the first quadrant. So that whole angle just reduces to tan of A. Number five. Let's do a different color. Now we're on to number five tan of 720 minus a now 720 minus a let's see which quadrant that takes us to okay so 720 is where 720 is going to take us 360 takes us to there 720 takes us around twice so if i what i could do to just change what this looks like i could go 720 minus 360 minus 360 minus a that reduces to 720 minus 360 minus 360 is just the tan of minus a now i can do that because what i'm doing is i'm just I'm going all the way around. And so if you cancel something with 360, you're actually ending up at the exactly the same place. So whether you add 360 or whether you subtract 360, I'm not changing the value of the angle. I'm just doing another complete loop. So we end up with tan of negative A, which we know now takes us to negative angles go clockwise takes us to the fourth quadrant. So this little tan of 720 minus A ends us up in the fourth quadrant and tan is negative there. So it becomes negative tan A. Let's do the last number, number six now. Tan of A minus 180. Hmm. Now A minus 180 
is not this one here. If we look at, back at our cast diagram, this is 180 plus A. Now, I've ended up with A minus 180, so that's slightly different. But you know what? There's nothing stopping me with changing this a little bit. So if I've got A minus 180, and if I add 360, it's going to take me to exactly the same place. Because if I show you here, okay, if I go, there are two ways of doing this. Okay, I could go A takes me up to the first quadrant because you know that A is an acute angle. So that's A. Now if I go A minus 180, if I go A to the first quadrant, if I go minus 180, it's in a negative going to be in a negative space. So if I go A minus 180, it's going to end up in the third quadrant. And so therefore, tan is just going to be positive, so it'll be tan of A. But what I could also do is I could just add on 360s, because that isn't going to change the value of anything. So if I add on 360, this is going to become the tan of A minus 180 plus 360 becomes tan of A plus 180. Or I could just rewrite that as a tan of 180 plus A, which now is definitely one of my ways of writing my reduction formula. And that 180 plus A is in the third quadrant and tan is positive in the third quadrant. So I think maybe I could just write this in two different ways, just so that you can see clearly what I mean by the two ways of doing it. I could go straight from tan of A minus 180, and I could straight away see that if I go A, my acute angle ends up there. But if I then subtract 180 in this direction, I'm going to end up in the third quadrant and tan is positive there or if I wanted to do it the other way I could just go tan of a minus 180 and to make it look like something that I recognize I can just add on 360 and then this becomes tan of a plus 180 which is also in the third quadrant which becomes tan of a so all I'm showing you here really is that there are two ways of doing this. You can either do this by saying A is going to take me to the first quadrant, minus 180, because it's a minus, it's in a negative direction, will take me to the third quadrant there. Or we could just add on 360 and rewrite it in a form which is easy to recognize because we know from that quadrant is theta, second quadrant is always 180 minus, third quadrant is always 180 plus, and fourth quadrant is always 360 minus. So what we can do is we can write that in a form that we recognize because it's one of those, or we can just do it this way. The choice is yours. Now what I'm going to do is do a video of two more complex examples, and if you can follow that and then practice some on your own. So now we're going to combine all our reduction, all our knowledge of reduction, cast diagrams, reducing bigger angles to acute angles, etc. And we put it together where we ask to simplify a question. So before we do it, we need two things in place. We need to know how we represent angles on the Cartesian plane, and we need to remember our cast diagram where the different um, ratios are positive and negative. So just in this top corner here, let's write our c a s t and the fact that theta 180 minus theta is quadrant 2 180 plus theta is quadrant 3 and 360 minus theta is there okay we're going to simplify this long number one and reduce it down to something really simple so remember the questions again what quadrant am i working in is it positive or negative and then reduce it so sine of 180 minus theta, in this case beta, which is acute. Sine of 180 minus beta is in that quadrant, sine is positive. 
So that becomes just sine of beta dot. 360 minus beta, 360 minus beta is in the fourth quadrant, and tan is negative there, so that reduces to minus tan of beta all over sine of 180 plus beta. What quadrant is 180 plus beta? Third quadrant. Sine, let's just indicate that, sine is negative there, so it's negative sine beta. And now to simplify, because there's no pluses and minuses, I don't have to factorize, I can just happily cancel. So let's take note that a minus divided by a minus is a plus. So those actually disappear, and that sign can go with that sign, so I'm left with positive tan beta. So that whole complicated expression simplified to give me tan of beta. Let's do one more. Okay, tan of negative x. Remember, we ask ourselves, what quadrant is this angle, and then is it positive or negative? Negative x. Negative angles go this way, so it's there. And tan is negative in the fourth quadrant, so that reduces to minus tan x. Then we have cos of 1080 minus x. We're not sure where that ends up, so we take our cassia and we quickly reduce it. So we go 1080 minus 360 minus 360 minus 360, and that ends up with zero. Okay, so that's just zero minus x, which is going to be minus x. So I'm going to leave that for now. So I've just reduced that. That's all I've done in this. Now we go to tan of 180 plus x. 180 plus x is in the third quadrant. Tan is positive in the third quadrant. So that reduces to just become tan x dot. Cos of x minus 180. Now be careful, x minus 180 is not the same as 180 minus x. So these are different. So in this case, there are two ways of doing it. You can either just look at it from this, or you can add 360. I prefer to just look at, look at this and get to which quadrant it's in. So in my head, I say okay, x is acute. So x is going to take me there, but I'm subtracting 180. So I'm going in this direction. So x up there, minus 180 there, so I end up in the third quadrant. So this angle is in the third quadrant, and cos is negative. So this becomes negative cos x. So now I've reduced, reduced, reduced. I still need to handle this cos of minus x. So I'm just going to rewrite everything for now. I'm sure you can see that things are going to cancel here, but let's just for now rewrite it all. The only thing we still have to handle is this cos of minus x. Remember, negative takes us in this direction. So my angle is in the fourth quadrant and cos is positive. So that just becomes cos of x. Now, let's have a look. We first do the signs. I always do the signs first. So minus divided by minus is a plus, so there's no minuses. Cancel, 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 cancel. So my answer is 1. So this long expression, when I reduced it by simplifying it, just becomes 1. Good. So now we need to go and practice a few. We're going to give you some homework examples, some ones to practice on to consolidate this, but it's easy peasy.